So in this video we're going to derive the envelope equation of projectile trajectories. I am expecting everyone who's watching this video to already be familiar with the trajectory equation. So if you're not familiar with that, you need to become familiar with that before moving on to understanding this concept of the envelope equation. Um, so I have a video on the trajectory equation in which I derive the trajectory equation within my playlist on Newtonian mechanics. So here we will quickly just remind ourselves of the trajectory equation and then we'll move on to the problem that gives rise to the envelope equation. So the trajectory equation then. So the whole problem is based on considering the surface of the earth and then considering having some particle which we're then projecting upwards from the surface of the earth and we project it upwards at a speed which we call v and an angle alpha. And then the trajectory equation is an equation for the graph of the path that the particle will follow, the trajectory that the particle will follow. So what you imagine doing is you imagine putting some axes on your two-dimensional plane in which the particle is going to move. So we usually call this the x-axis and we usually call this the z-axis, so horizontal is x and upwards, up and down, is going to be z. And then we will put those axes on our two-dimensional space in such a way that the units are all going to work out. So one, uh, a horizontal displacement of one, will correspond to a horizontal displacement of one metre in the real world. And likewise, vertically, we'll have one representing a distance from the origin which we take as the place where the particle was initially fired from. Um, so that going one up from that will be a one metre displacement upwards. And then the trajectory equation then is an equation for the z coordinates in terms of the x coordinates. So it gives us an explicit formula for at each x value what z height the particle will be at. So this is the trajectory equation as so, and we derive this in the video on the trajectory equation. So it's z is equal to x tan alpha. So remember, we are assuming alpha is preset. So you've preset what speed you project the particle off at and what angle you set it off at. So even though this looks complicated, it's actually a very simple equation in uh, terms of x and z. So z is equal to x tan alpha, and then it's minus gx squared over 2v squared cos squared alpha. So again, remember, g is just the gravitational acceleration, so it's around 10. Um, more precisely, it's around 9.81. And then v and alpha are all preset. So this actually is just a quadratic in x. So in terms of what this graph is going to look like, well, it's going to be a negative parabola. We've got z is equal to, this is all just a constant, minus that constant x squared, and then plus another constant x. So it's overall going to be a negative parabola. Uh, and it's going to go through this point here, the point 0, 0. That's going to be one of the places, one of the solutions to this is equal to 0. And it's also going to go through some other point down here, which is where the particle comes back and meets the Earth. So it's going to look something like that. So parabolic motion. Now it's important to say that in the derivation of this equation, we make some simplifying assumptions, the main one being that we ignore air resistance. So this is the path, the perfect path that the particle would follow if the only force acting on it was gravity. Now, of course, in the real world, a massive force that's going to be acting on the particle is air resistance, and that changes the motion so that particles, when you project them, don't actually follow perfect parabolic motion trajectories. However, in our perfect mass world, where we can ignore air resistance, then the particles would follow these perfect paths. The solving the problem where you put in air resistance becomes much more difficult. In fact, the differential equations, the calculus, becomes unsolvable. You can't get perfect solutions in the way that we can uh, when we're just considering the force of gravity.
uh, and instead what you have to do is use numerical methods and you can get better and better approximations that are good enough for working out how particles will move in our real world but are still less satisfying than these perfect calculus solutions. So that's one of the major reasons that everyone loves this case where you ignore air resistance and no one ever talks about the case where you suddenly take into account air resistance because things become much less beautiful and much more um, complicated computationally. Now, if you vary the starting parameters, so you vary the starting speed and you vary alpha, obviously the trajectory is then going to change. So, for instance, if we consider projecting the particle up in this direction, maybe with a smaller speed now, we'll get a very different trajectory, maybe something that looks like that. The problem or the idea or the question that leads to this envelope equation is as follows. We're not going to vary the speed v. We're going to fix v. And instead, what we're going to do is allow alpha, the angle, to vary. So we are going to fire our particle at a certain speed, but now you can point the gun in any direction. So you can point it from zero angles, which obviously isn't going to be a very interesting case, uh, or you can point it directly upwards. And the, or anything in between, of course, all the answers in between. So if you then consider all the different trajectories you get for that fixed V, we could draw these all out. So we'd have loads and loads of pathways where each one has a different alpha. And what we now want to consider is where can you actually get the particle to? So which points in our horizontal plane are actually doable, actually reachable by the particle when you fire it off at that speed? So we, because obviously something way out here, if you start, if you fire it off at a small speed, something way out here is unobtainable. No matter what angle you make alpha, it's never going to be the case that the particle is going to get this far. You have to raise V. So there's only so much that the angle can do. You know, varying the angle means that you can get to different points. So for instance, uh, the best angle to go at is 45 degrees. That's the point that will get you the furthest if, if you care about horizontal displacement. In terms of this final bit over here, you will get furthest if you uh, go at 45 degrees. But there's only so far that it can get you, you know, maximizing the angle, choosing the best angle can only get you so far. At some point, there is a bit that is out of reach and you would have to raise V in order to get there. And the envelope equation is going to be the boundary of all the points that are obtainable at a certain velocity. So let's work this out. So we're going to use the trajectory equation to do this. So we're going to consider a point in our two-dimensional plane, so a general point, xz, and we're going to ask for a given v, so v is now fixed throughout, for a given v, is there an alpha that you can use that would mean that the trajectory goes through that point? So quite simply, that means that x and z, when you plug it into this formula, there has to be some alpha such that it's satisfied. If that is the case, that there exists an alpha for which this is satisfied, then you can just use that alpha, project your particle up at that velocity with your fixed VV, and yes, that point will be on the trajectory, or be it will satisfy the condition to be on that parabola that, that represents that trajectory. And of course, you know, we're assuming this point XZ is up in this quadrant. Of course, if it's down here, then it's not relevant because it's, even though it might be on the parabola in maths, you know, that part of the parabola isn't relevant to the physical world. So um, we're only interested in the ones that are up in this quadrant. But if you pick a point that's up in that quadrant and it satisfies this equation, i.e. there is an alpha such that this equation is satisfied, then yes, if you project your particle up at that alpha with your fixed, veloc fixed speed, rather, v, then yes, its path will go through that point. So now we just need to figure out for which points xz is there going to exist an alpha that makes this equation true. So we just need to solve 
this equation for alpha and see when it's going to actually be solvable to give us a real value of alpha between 0 and 90 degrees. So this is a trigonometric equation then, and we can make this more amenable to solve by noting that we've got a 1 over cos squared alpha here, and that we can replace that 1 over cos squared alpha with sec squared alpha. Now why is that helpful? Well, because there is a trigonometric identity relating sec squared alpha to tan squared alpha that comes from the major trigonometric identity, the Pythagorean identity, that sine squared of any angle plus cos squared of that angle is going to equal 1. So dividing throughout by cos squared of alpha yields 1 plus tan squared alpha is equal to sec squared alpha. So a very famous uh, version, effectively, of the Pythagorean identity. So we can now substitute in for the sec squared of alpha, 1 plus tan squared of alpha, and this gives that z is equal to x tan alpha minus, we have gx squared over 2v squared, 1 plus tan squared alpha. Now let's rearrange this algebraically to get a quadratic in tan of alpha. And then what we can consider is when is that quadratic going to be solvable? Because in those cases where it's solvable is where there is going to be an alpha that actually is going to give rise to a trajectory that will go through our point xz. And in the cases where the quadratic isn't solvable because the discriminant is negative, those are the cases where there is no such alpha that will ever get a trajectory that goes through that point because your velocity, your, sorry, your speed, I'll keep saying velocity when I should really be saying speed because the speed simply isn't big enough. So let's start by multiplying through by 2v squared because it's not nice having that on the bottom there. So that will give us 2v squared z is equal to 2v squared x times tan of alpha minus, and let's expand this bracket, so we've got there minus gx squared minus gx squared tan squared of alpha. And now what we can do is bring things over to the other side. So we'll take this to this side because we want everything, well, we want the leading term of the quadratic to be positive. It just looks nicer if that's so. So we'll get gx squared tan squared of alpha. And then when we take this to this side, we'll get minus. So we'll have minus 2v squared x tan of alpha. And then we've got plus 2v squared z plus gx squared. And then we want the solutions for that is equal to zero. So we want to find the solutions for tan of alpha that make this quadratic equal to zero. Now, at this point, it's probably a good idea to just think again about what we've actually got here. So remember the original problem we started with. We've got a fixed v, and then we've got some point xz, and we're trying to work out, is there an alpha such that if you project your particle at that alpha, it will go through this point xz. And what we've now got is a quadratic equation in tan of alpha that if we can solve it and get values for tan of alpha, then from those values of tan of alpha, we should be able to then get an alpha value that would satisfy this. Because remember, tan of alpha, the inverse tangent function is defined for the entire real line. So as long as you get a solution to tan of alpha, you will then get a solution to alpha. So if I just quickly draw the arc tan function. So remember, it looks something like this and it's defined also for the negatives like this. So it's converging to this asymptote here, where this unreachable answer is pi by 2, and down here again it's likewise getting closer and closer to negative pi by 2. But my point for drawing this is that this is arc tan, or tan inverse, so y is equal to tan inverse of x. My point is that it is defined for all of the real 
numbers. So as long as you can get a solution for what tan of alpha is equal to, you can then invert that to get some alpha. Now you might say, well, hang on a second, what if the solutions I get for tan of alpha are negatives? Because then the alpha that you get out of that is going to be a negative alpha, i.e. we're going to be projecting it downwards. Well, I say we don't need to worry about that. We don't need to worry about that potentially giving us false solutions because if you project the particle downwards, now, of course, that's not a real physical scenario, but the maths allows it. Gravity is now still going to be working downwards, so the pathway you're going to get is just going to be a parabola that goes downwards. So for these points that we're considering up in this quadrant, these points, there's no way that one of these negative parabolas that's going to come about from a negative alpha is ever going to go through one of these points up here. So we're not going to get any false or fake solutions from that. So we don't need to worry about that. We just need to think about are there solutions to this? Because if there is going to be a solution to that, then we, have, we know that there will exist an alpha such that that alpha's trajectory goes through our point xz. So we just need to work out when are there going to be solutions to this. Well, that's going to be when the discriminant is greater than or equal to zero. When the discriminant of the quadratic is less than zero, that's when, no, no, there's no solutions to it. There's no physically meaningful solutions to it. So the discriminant of this quadratic needs to be greater than zero. So remember, the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. So this is going to need to be greater than or equal to zero. So now let's just fill in with our coefficients for this quadratic. So b squared, well, this bit's b, so we're going to square that. So the negative's going to go, so it's going to become 4 times v to the power of 4 x squared. And then we've got minus 4 times a, which is gx squared. That's the coefficient here. Remember, this is a quadratic in tan of alpha. And then it's multiplied by c. And c is quite complex. It's all of this bit. So we'll have some brackets there. So times 2 v squared z plus gx squared. And this thing is going to need to be greater than or equal to 0. Let's do a bit of algebraic manipulation. So we'll just multiply out those brackets. So this becomes 4 v to the power of 4 x squared minus, and then we've got 8. In fact, we can divide through by the 4. That will make things easier. So I'm just going to get rid of this. Go back. So v to the power of 4 x squared minus, and then we've got 2 um, v squared g x squared z minus 4 is gone. So g squared x to the power of 4 is now greater than or equal to 0. So what is this inequality that we've got here? Well, this is what the x and the z value are going to have to obey if there's any hope that there will be an alpha that if you project the particle at that angle, it will go through this point x and z. So this is all in terms of things that are set. So g obviously is just the gravitational acceleration. V we have set. So it is just an inequality in x and z. So x and z need to obey this. And in that case, this quadratic in tan of alpha will have solutions and there will therefore be alphas that give rise to a trajectory that goes through the point xz. So this is what x and z need to obey in order for you to actually be able to obtain that point with the initial speed v for some alpha. It doesn't tell you how to get that alpha, but it says that there will be some alpha that if you project it at that alpha, it will get to that point. So let's now try and simplify this, because ideally what we would like is to get z on one side and then have some function of x on the other side, and it looks as though we're going to be able to do that without too much difficulty. So what we really want to do is multiply through by the multiplicative inverse of x squared, because there is an x squared throughout all of these terms. Now. To do that, because it's an inequality, we need to make sure of two things. One, we need to make sure that the multiplicative inverse is going to exist. And of course, that makes the assumption that x is not equal to 0. The second thing we need to do is make sure that its multiplicative inverse is going to be greater than 0. 
uh, because, of course, when you multiply through by a negative number in inequalities, it flips the inequality round. So whatever x is equal to, x squared will be positive, and therefore its multiplicative inverse will also be positive. Basic um, inequality facts. So we can therefore multiply through by the multiplicative inverse of x squared, i.e. just cancel the x squared, as long as we make the assumption that x is not equal to zero. So doing that, we'll get v to the power of 4 minus 2v squared g z minus g squared x squared is greater than or equal to zero. Now let's just think about what assumption we've made there that x is not equal to zero. Well, x being equal to zero is the case that we've chosen one of these points in the vertical axis here, i.e. that the particle needs to be fired directly upwards. So we just need to be aware that our final solution might not actually work for that case. It's going to turn out that the inequality we get, the envelope equation, actually does work for that case. So it doesn't matter, it still ends up working for that case. But we just need to be aware that we need to check that at the end because it might be the case that it isn't going to work for that point because we made this manipulation here which relied upon x not equaling zero. So we'll just check that at the end, we'll make a note of that. So let's now do a little bit more manipulation to this. So we'll take this to this side. So we'll then get that v to the power of 4 minus g squared x squared is greater than or equal to 2v squared g z. And now we can just multiply through by the multiplicative inverse of all of this, this whole thing is positive, v squared is positive, g is positive, 2 is positive, so the whole thing is positive. So we can multiply through by its multiplicative inverse, which will also be positive, and we then get that z is going to be less than or equal to v to the power of 4 over 2v squared g minus g squared x squared over 2v squared g. So just cancelling, this gives that z needs to be less than or equal to the v squared cancels, so we get v squared over 2g minus the g cancels, so we get gx squared over 2v squared. So this then is the condition that the xz points needs to obey in order for it to actually be obtainable with our initial speed v. It doesn't tell you which alpha is going to make this obtainable, but it tells you that there will be some alpha for which it is obtainable. So given your x value, it tells you the condition the z value is going to need to obey. So it's going to need to be less than or equal to this in order for that point xz to actually be obtainable. So let's think more about what this is actually going to look like. So to understand this better, let's actually consider the equation z is equal to v squared over 2g minus gx squared over 2v squared. Because if we can plot what that graph looks like, then we're interested in all the points that are on that and below that, less than or equal to. So this is going to be a graph of z in terms of x, Remember, v and g are just constants, so all this is is actually a very simple negative parabola in x. And then it's just got a plus a constant term here. So we can draw this. So and I'm going to draw the full maths thing, and then we'll think about which points, which bits of this are actually relevant to our physical problem. So it's going to look something like this then negative parabola. It's going to peak at this point 0 and then the z-intercept is v squared over 2g. And then I suppose the other things that we'd like to know is where is it going to cross the x-axis? Particularly, we're very interested in this bit because these are the, this is the quadrant that we're interested in for our physical problem. Uh, but of course, it's going to be symmetric, so this one is just going to be the positive uh, version of this one. So let's solve it then. So make this equal to zero. We'll just get that v squared 
over 2g is equal to gx squared over 2v squared. So the 2s thankfully cancel, but everything else doesn't. So you'll get x squared is equal to v to the power of 4 over g squared, which will then give that x is equal to plus or minus v squared over g, but of course we're only interested in the positive one, so x is equal to v squared over g. So that's that, the uh, x-intercept here, y, v squared over g. Thinking again about the actual inequality, so we want all the points underneath this curve. So all the points underneath this curve are going to satisfy this inequality. But of course, that's the mathematical solution. Now let's think about our actual physical problem. Which points are relevant to the physical problem? Well, they're just the points in this uh, first quadrant up here. So it's all of these points here. So all of these points that I'm shading in now, these are going to be points then that are obtainable by our particle when it's projected off at this speed v, i.e. there exists an alpha where if you project that particle at that alpha, the trajectory that the particle follows will go through that point. And then the points outside, over here, these are the ones where I'm afraid your speed isn't big enough. There's no alpha that you can find that will actually produce a trajectory that goes through those points. No matter how hard you find, how hard you try to pick the best alpha to get the particle to go as close as possible to that point, you won't ever be able to get an alpha that actually gets it through those ones. So this equation then, z is equal to v squared over 2g minus gx squared over 2v squared, which describes the boundary of these obtainable points. This is called the envelope or the edge, the envelope equation, because it's the edge of the points that are actually obtainable. It's the boundary, the envelope of the points that are actually obtainable by the particle when it's projected at that speed v. So one of the things I said I wanted to check was the case where uh, x is equal to zero. So the case where we're looking just at these points in the vertical axis and make sure that this is still true in that case. So let's think about that then. So we're now going to project our particle vertically upwards at a speed v, and we want to make sure that it can reach all of these points and that the maximum height it can possibly get to is this point here, v squared over 2g. So how are we going to do that? Well, we can't use the trajectory equation the whole derivation of the trajectory equation makes the assumption that alpha is not equal to 90 degrees because, of course, tan of 90 isn't defined, it's infinite. So this whole thing doesn't work in the case where you project it upwards. It, its derivation relies upon the being an x component of motion, so it's totally invalid in the case where there is no x component for the motion. So, in fact, everything becomes much simpler when we just project it upwards. So there is no x component of motion. All of the motion is just in the z component. So z is going to equal, in terms of time, it's going to equal v. Now v is entirely in the direction upwards, so we don't actually even need that v sine of alpha anymore. So it's just going to be v times t minus then the effect of gravity, which is gt squared over 2. So if you don't know where that's come from, I do urge you to watch the video on the trajectory equation. This is quite simply an equation of motion. So this comes from the fact that the acceleration the particle feels is going to be negative g. And then from the acceleration, you can get uh, velocity by integrating. And then you make the equation fit to your initial starting condition, which is that v is going to be uh, equal to this v at time is equal to zero, and then you integrate that again for the position vector, uh, and then you'll end up with this. So this gives the z value as a function of time. Let's just think about what that graph is going to look like. Well, it's going to be a quadratic. So remember now, this, this graph that I'm plotting isn't the two-dimensional plane that we've been plotting all along. Now time is on this axis here, and 
we're just plotting the z height as a function of time. So it's just moving in this one dimensional space now, but we're now plotting time as well. So it's going to look like this. So it's going to go up and then come down and we just want that maximum height that it reaches and we want to make sure that it's equal to v squared over 2g. So how are we going to do that? Well, all we're going to do is find this, find this, then we can take half way in between and then work out what z is equal to at that halfway in between time. So we just find the two uh, t intercepts then, so set z equal to zero and we get that vt minus gt squared over two is equal to zero. One of the solutions is clearly equal to t is equal to zero, which is when you factor out that t. And then the other solution is going to be when this is equal to zero. So that's going to be gt over two is equal to v. Yep. Um, and therefore t is equal to 2v over g. So that's that t value there. So this is 2v over g. So halfway in between is going to be the maximum of that parabola by symmetry. So that's v over g. So now we just need to put v over g back into here. And we'll get that z is equal to v squared over g minus g and then v over g squared over 2, and then this is going to be v squared over g minus, expanding that, we'll get g times v squared over g squared, so that g cancels, so we'll get minus v squared over 2g. So this is just a half of this one, so we then end up with v squared over 2g, so that's that maximum height that this particle will attain. Oh, and look, that's perfect. That agrees exactly with what we've got up here. So indeed, yes, this particle's path will be able to go through all of those points underneath there. And then the final point that it will get to is that it won't be able to get to any of these points above there. So this is the edge of where it's obtainable. So indeed, this envelope equation still works for that case that x is equal to zero. So before we finish this video, I would like to give an example of the sort of problem that the envelope equation is actually helpful for solving. So if we consider, again, the scenario that we have a particle that we're projecting upwards, so speed v, angle alpha, and now consider this question. Consider the, a brick wall in the path of the particle and let's say it's a distance d, horizontal distance d away from where you fire the ball. So this distance from here to here is d. And then it's got some height, h. And the problem we want to ask is what is the smallest speed that you can fire the particle at in order that it will actually get over this brick wall and come down the other side? And we're not interested in the alpha. We're asking for the absolute minimum speed. Now, of course, the path that the particle will follow completely depends on alpha, and whether it gets over the brick wall will completely depend on alpha. You know, if you fired it straight upwards, no matter how big you make the speed, if you fire it straight upwards, it's never going to go over that wall. But what the problem we're asking is, Assume you pick the absolute best alpha, that you pick the absolute best alpha to try and get the particle over the wall. For some speeds, there is going to be no alphas that will ever get it over that wall. You know, if you pick a tiny little speed, no matter how good you make alpha, it's never going to get over that wall. So you're going to have to make V bigger and bigger and bigger. And we are asking what is the smallest velocity that there is, smallest speed, such that finally there exists a alpha that if you project the particle up at that angle, it will just get over that brick wall. That's the question we're asking. We're saying, assume you maximize alpha, you make alpha the best you possibly can to get it over this wall. What's the smallest V such that there is going to exist an alpha 
that finally gets the particle over that wall. That's the problem we're going to ask. And the envelope equation is going to beautifully be able to solve that for us. So this is how you use the envelope equation to solve that. So for any speed v, we now know that you have this envelope equation, which is the boundary of points that are actually obtainable with that speed v. So maybe it might look like this. Obviously for some smaller v than the arrow seems to show here. The bigger you make that speed v, the bigger the envelope is going to become. So here is a larger envelope corresponding to a larger v. And we can see that by looking at the envelope equation and looking at the graph for the envelope equation. So here is the envelope equation here. Remember this bit tells you what the z in the, sorry, the, yes, the z-intercept is going to be. And then this coefficient here tells you how steeply it's going to go down. So the greater this coefficient, the more steep is going to be the parabola. So we can see as we make v bigger, v squared is going to get bigger. So the z-intercept is going to go up. So the height that you can get to is going to be increased the bigger you make v. Here, the bigger v gets, the smaller this coefficient gets, so the less steep the parabola becomes. So the parabola is going to become broader and broader, so you're going to be able to get further as well. So the bigger v gets, truly, the bigger and bigger this envelope, this range of places in the two-dimensional plane that the particle is able to get to is going to get. So going back to our original problem, so if we want to find the smallest speed that can possibly get over this brick wall here, what we need to do is find the smallest speed that gives rise to an envelope where the solutions underneath include this point, which is the point dh, so the point at the tip of that wall. I don't know if this is working. Yeah, I think it is now. That point is has coordinates dh. So we want that point to be included underneath our envelope. And indeed, the smallest speed that's going to give rise to such an envelope is going to be the one that actually has that point on the envelope. So we actually are looking for a speed such that its envelope equation includes that point. So we can just put in this value for x, this value for h, uh, for z rather, and then solve for what v needs to be equal to to give rise to that. And that will then be the smallest speed that has this as a possible obtainable point. And of course, once it's on that envelope, that means that that point is obtainable with that speed. And that trajectory will go over the wall because where else is it going to go? You know, if the particle's got to that point, it's not suddenly going to turn back and go this way, so it is going to go down there. So indeed, that trajectory will be a trajectory that takes the particle over that wall if it's managing to obtain that point, dh. So we just need an envelope that has this on it. That's going to be give rise to that smallest speed which gets over that wall. Bigger speeds, where this point is well and truly underneath the envelope, they will also have loads of trajectories that go over that. But if you want to find the minimum speed, it's the one where the envelope just includes that point, i.e. where that point is actually on the envelope. So just to give you an example of solving that, so let's just put these values into our envelope equation. So for z, we have h and then v squared over 2g minus, and then x is now going to be d squared. So gd squared over 2v squared. And then what we're going to get then is a quadratic equation in v squared. So we multiply both sides by v squared. So we'll get hv squared is equal to v to the power of 4 over 2g minus gd squared over 2. So that's then a quadratic equation in v squared, so we've got v squared and then we've got v squared squared, so we just need to solve this to get possible values of v squared. We'll get 
potentially a positive one and a negative one. We disregard that negative one. And again, then we will just take those solutions and square root it to get what V is going to be equal to. And again, we disregard the negative one. We're only interested in the positive one. So if you were to solve that, you'd then get the minimal speed uh, needed in order for there to be an alpha that if you project the particle at that angle, it will get over that wall. So that's a quite neat little problem that is amenable to being solved using the envelope equation. So this equation here, this is what is meant by the envelope equation of projectile trajectories. And it is that boundary of all the points that are going to be obtainable uh, given a speed that you're going to project the particle where you can vary the angle that you're projecting it at. So thank you for watching this video. Um, I hope you've learned something and I hope you've enjoyed it.